So my AC joint injury, what happened? Why do I have to stop benching? And why do I have to keep getting hurt? Well, this is a simple problem, simple solution, is to not train so hard, train so often. Well, volume is makes you stronger, but it also can get you hurt. And uh, that's what's happening to me. My AC joint, my chromioclavicular joint is injured because it's tender to the touch, or was tender, so it's getting better now. Uh, it just hurt, I was drinking coffee, it hurt. It was annoying to kind of lie on my side on it. It was just, it's, it was inflamed. Uh, I knew from experience, I've irritated this joint before, not quite like this way, but when you irritate ligaments, that's the bo bone connects to bone, uh, they don't heal, they heal, they get better, but when you really tear them or stretch them out, they don't really quite stretch back, which means that's the, there's less stability there. And I don't know, maybe you can kind of get a sense for this. If you've ever had this injury or this kind of pain, if you were to find the piece to where your uh, clavicle meets your acromion process or where your stroll blade is, you can kind of test the space. And on my left side, the space is a little bit thicker or long. So basically, it's a, little, it's a little bit um, bigger gap and there should be not that much of a gap. I mean, that's just basically a comparison. And what this does, based on my research and sort of kind of connecting the dots, is instability. Now, it's kind of hard to really articulate this is a good video in case you want to geek out on the more of the sort of a physical therapist point of view I found a really good video on it but uh, I saw it and it kind of had a just really great aha moment it made me realize what's going on because on my left shoulder I had this issue before where my left side just kind of gave out on me uh, when I was doing bench press it was just like it was so weird it freaked me out because I'm like I'm pushing but I'm, I can't go you know, I, I, it, was, it was so bad I got to a point where I couldn't even curl 25 pounds it was ridiculous and I don't want that to ever happen to me again so I kind of freaked out. So, you know, being overly sensitive to these things, I'm sort of like, okay, need to start being smarter about my training. But here's kind of what's going on and sort of what's what's happening. It's, it's connecting all the dots. You'll, maybe as I explain this, you'll get a better idea what's going on. Uh, in the past, I've made videos about levator scapula pain. Some people had some questions about that. Um, and then, you know, and I had this weak left arm. I couldn't curl 25 pounds. And now I'm having this AC joint pain, which is a previous something I've heard before okay not quite like this but I've had it before what's going on well this AC joint is getting more and more unstable it's getting I guess you call it weak well the, the integrity is not very good because it's getting stretched out but the thing to really think about is that this is connected the, the, the collarbone and then the scapula are connected and this is a joint that moves around when it becomes unstable this is a, a this is a hard structure not like muscle not like tendons not like a, not, not like muscles and tendons where there's a lot of blood flow it's an actual like it's like hinges, if that makes any sense. And when there's lack of stability, the muscles have to compensate. And sometimes the muscles don't compensate well. And when I kind of talk to you about my left weak shoulder, one of the things that making this kind of a show itself better, if you want to take a look at that video I, I'm mentioning about AC joint pain uh, by that physical therapist, uh, is that it's making it so the whole system is compensating. So on my left side, if you have elevator scapula pain, and really the scapula elevator pain has more related to improper uh, use of the entire particular side. So what's going on with me, or what's probably happening with me, is that this AC joint is getting more and more unstable due to my lifting practices uh, over time. And then what's happening is my traps and rhomboids are getting overdeveloped. This is why this is all pretty jacked and pretty developed for me. Uh, especially compared to my right side, it's much more stronger. This is my stronger grip. I don't ever, I can hold, you know, 600 pounds pretty easily, I guess you can say. This, this, I'd rarely lose grip in this hand. Whereas this hand, I lose grip. But my point is, is that this, because of this one little joint, irritation, inflammation, it is getting more and more unstable. So so the trap, the levator, the rhomboids all have to compensate. So the scapula is not moving like the way it should. And what I'm doing is because I'm getting stronger and making progress, I can kind of hide all my shortcomings. And this is kind of where bodybuilding stuff come in. This is kind of where activation, foam rolling drills come in. This is where rehab stuff come in because that's what I'm going to have to do if I want to prevent, if I want to keep getting stronger in the bench without injuring my AC joint because I can still keep getting stronger and keep making progress but at the sacrifice of my joints. And that's kind of what they say when benching is bad for your shoulders or squatting is bad for your knees. It's really more about the approach you take. It should be good for your knees. It should be good for your shoulder but it's really more about understanding what's going on and what I'm t telling you is that there is instability to the shoulder not because of the rotator cuff but not because of the muscles, but because of the physical joint, which is probably due to some of the muscles, muscle balances and whatnot. So, causing all kinds of compensation, 
it explains why my rear delt is so flat in comparison to my right, why I've underdeveloped lateral delts, and why this whole side specifically is a lot more underdeveloped in comparison to my right. Because what's happening is my jacked trap, trapezius, and rhomboids on my left side, and even probably my lat, I would say, are so strong in comparison to my right that my left shoulder is not able to do the job it needs to. So because, well, it's not able to do because of the unstable AC joint. This is just one of the reasons, or this is kind of my hypothesis. So uh, here's kind of what I'm thinking of. Uh, what I need to work on is... Uh, or what you need to work on if you have this issue is simply to work on releasing your rhomboids and releasing your shoulder blade muscles, the muscles around your, your rhomboids, loosening up your traps by smashing, like using a lacrosse ball, foam roller, or getting manual therapy. And then it's going to go to rotator cuff type exercises, external, internal, um, what else is there? There's a lot of, um, uh, if you look up scapula presses or push up plus one, where you work the serratus anterior, essentially trying to improve pr protraction, or retraction, elevation, and depression. And it's um, sort of interesting because that's, I mean, every no matter what injury you look up, whether it be knee or shoulder, and depending on your understanding and education and background, it almost comes back to the same thing. It just comes back to the same few principles. But it's still important that you know some things, like releasing that, like I wouldn't know to release my traps and my my rhomboids if I didn't find that information because I would just be focusing on strengthening my rear delts and just doing rotator cuff work. But it's understanding that these, because of what's happening is, remember, it's, it's just, it's like guarding, you know, the, the traps and the rhomboids are wanting to take over what the shoulder can do. And because of the basically small selections of, of, of movements I have, you can't really tell a whole lot. It's not until I do a bunch of movements that you'll be able to see the problems or I'll be able to notice the problems. But, um, that's all I got for this video. If you have a question, please leave a comment below. Hope uh, you got something out of it. If you want to kind of, if you're watching this video much later in the future, uh, you can just leave a comment, see how I'm doing. And um, that's all I got. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you guys on the next video.